Delta variant continues to surge in the Bay Area, and now it looks like fully vaccinated people in the U.S. are going to start lining up for booster shots. Joining me now is Dr. Jorge Salinas from Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for being here today. I'm glad to be here. So booster shots are going to be available this fall if approved by the FDA. What are your thoughts on this development? So, so the, the Department of Health and Human Services has announced that they are starting uh, to plan for it. But as you said, uh, it still requires uh, approval from the Food and Drug Administration and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices from CDC. So, um, so yes, it, it will happen. There is some evidence for it. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure that it would help those uh, individuals getting vaccinated, but I'm a bit concerned about uh, the people that uh, could also benefit from those doses. So we, we have this ethical conundrum of third doses versus first doses for other people. Are you talking mainly in, say, other countries where uh, supplies are very scarce? Correct. And um, some people are, are concerned because it, it uh, creates an ethical dilemma, but it also it may create a public health problem because uh, variants such as Delta happen in societies that have uh, low vaccination rates and, and, and a lot of virus transmission. So uh, if developed countries continue using up most of the global vaccine supply, uh, some other countries will continue having Delta or other variants circulating, and those variants will eventually come back to America, rendering vaccines less effective. And it creates a, a, some sort of a vicious circle. So speaking of that, do you think getting boosters could become a routine thing for us? I think that from a biologic perspective, uh, yes. Uh, it, it is clear that uh, uh, immunity, especially against mild uh, infection, decreases over time. Uh, uh, so far, uh, up to eight months or so after vaccination, we have evidence that uh, vaccines still protect us very well against severe disease hospitalization and death, but uh, the Department of Health and Human Services is uh, speculating that perhaps farther down the road, immunity against severe disease could uh, decrease as well, and that's why they are preparing for, for the boosters, but there is no evidence of that yet. Now, you mentioned the Delta variant earlier. It, it's changing in and of itself, being its own variant. Is it causing different symptoms right now than what the original variant was? I don't think so. I think that it, it's still COVID, and uh, in the Delta variant is is, uh, is is a new form of COVID, and and I think it's here to stay. And we're going to see variants on top of of the Delta variant, but but the manifestations are still the same: fever, cough, shortness of breath, pneumonia, uh, especially among those who are not vaccinated, who have not received a single dose. Yeah, let me let me dig in a little bit on that. We know there are plenty of breakthrough cases right now for uh, vaccinated people. Is there a difference in how vaccinated versus unvaccinated people are experiencing the sickness? Absolutely. Yes. In that sense, uh, correct. Uh, vaccinated individuals, first of all, they are protected against getting infected. The protection is not 100 percent, but they are protected. And if they do develop COVID, which has happened, uh, the, the symptoms are milder. The, the likelihood of needing to go into the hospital is much decreased, and the likelihood of death is completely decreased. So yes, they, they, the natural history of w or what happens to you if you happen to develop COVID uh, de uh, differs tremendously whether you are vaccinated or not. No, we've been hearing a lot more about the efficacy of some of these shots uh, from Pfizer and Moderna against Delta. But what about Johnson & Johnson? So so, the, so far, the data that we have is that it still protects uh, relatively well against infection and very well against severe disease. Now, uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine started uh, rolling out in the United States in March. So, um, so we, we'll still have to see what happens over the next few months in terms of any potential of waning immunity. But so far, it remains being an effective vaccine. But yes, it is possible that if the goal of our public health strategy in America is to avoid infections and not only severe disease, it is possible that people who have received uh, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will uh, also be eligible for boosters at some point in the future.
Okay, we will be keeping an eye on it. Dr. Jorge Salinas from Stanford Healthcare. Thanks a lot.